don't know me, my name is Dr. Ranelli Williams. I am a certified public accountant and a financial educator and legacy catalyst. My husband, Eric, and I, we own a tax and accounting business together. And so this is quite a busy season for us. But this, you know, I have committed to be here with you every week in the group, giving you some new knowledge. And tonight is no different. Um, as a financial educator and legacy catalyst, my role is to help couples and parents give their children a head start by leaving them a legacy of faith, of business ownership, of money mastery, and of generational wealth building. And tonight, we're going to be talking about build credit to build wealth. So let me tell you a little bit about Constance. She's an international best-selling author, investor, speaker, musician, and the CEO of the largest African-American residential real estate and landing firm in Northern California. So yes, yeah, she's joining us all the way from California tonight. And um, she wrote a few books, one of them being O-N-E-1, Bill Credit to Bill Wealth, Keeping Score, and her latest release is Breaking the Broke Code. And um, I'm not going to go ahead and read the rest of her bio. I posted in the group. Make sure that you go ahead and do that. But Constance is a wealth of knowledge. She's someone that I met um, probably just about a year ago um, at an event. And I was so inspired by her story about, you know, what she was able to share with us that I knew she was someone that I needed to get in front of the Legacy Builders Forum. So Constance, welcome to the Legacy Builders Forum tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that yeah. you invited me. I'm honored, so thank you. You're welcome, my pleasure. So, you know, we heard lots of great things that you're doing, real estate, writing books, um, teaching people on building wealth. But why don't you just take us back a little bit to what made you decide to go down that route? I know that, you know, um, I've heard your story and I know that your life wasn't all peachy all the time, right? So take us back a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your story before we get into Build Credit to Build Wealth. Okay, well, thank you again. Thank you for having me. Um, so, you know, I, I, as you mentioned, I am uh, a CEO of a real estate, a real estate firm. Uh, my journey has, to get here has definitely been, um, it's been exciting, it's been, uh, I don't want to say tragic. It's been very tumultuous. It's, you know, I, I, I was raised in a household, very loving parents. Um, they, they were very young when they started having kids. My mom, 16, when they had my brother, 18, when they had my sister, 23, when they had me. So they used to get back together, get together, break up, get together, break up every year. Um, and I used to always overhear my parents always, you know, talking about, um, you know, we couldn't do this. We can't do that because we have bad credit. I didn't know what this bad credit was, but I knew it was ruining our lives. So I vowed never to have bad credit. But as I was growing up, um, you know, my parents, they were really young. They moved to California from Arkansas. And um, as they moved, people started moving in with us. And at, some, at one point, you know, when I was seven, um, when they got together what, for what was the longest period of time, we ended up having... 19 people living in a three bedroom home that was for a family of five. And so to say that, you know, I was exposed to a lot, overexposed to a lot as a child. Um, and then my mother ended up leaving the house. Well, we moved out of that home and, and then we were finally kind of a somewhat semi normal family. My mother left the home when I was 14. And um, so that, but then I always had my father. My father has always been consistent. Um, but then he, met a woman and got married relatively quickly when I was a senior in high school. And um, at 18, as soon as I graduated from high school, I ended up homeless. Um, my father and his wife no longer wanted me in the home. And so I ended up being homeless. And that was a very uh, tragic time in my life as an 18 year old trying to figure out what to do, how to live, how to survive, how to, you know, just make it in, in the world by myself. And, um, you know, everything that I have been through was really um, the catalyst of where I am today. 
um, it's because of those times, it's because of the adversity, it's because of the obstacles, it's because of everything that I've gone through is, is the reason why I'm so passionate about um, creating wealth, creating a life for my family. I, um, the life that I have now is, is by choice. You understand? So I know that, you know, when we go through things in life, we can either repeat what we've gone through or we can make a decision to change it. And my life is a direct result of everything that I wanted growing up. You know, I used to just want to sit at the dinner table and eat as a normal family and that's never happened. And so that's what I make sure that we do here. I'm in my home. I've never been on vacation with my family and, and that's what I make sure that we do, you know, between five and 10 vacations a year with my family. And so um, that's, you know, just so important. So as I sit here today, yes, I'm the CEO of the largest African American owned real estate firm in Northern California. It's because of that. Um, yes, I am an investor in a marijuana dispensary that grosses about a million dollars per month. Um, it's because of that. Um, I'm a best selling author. And, and all of those things is because of where I've come from. You know, today my parents are, you know, they're in my life and we have a great village now. My dad's no longer married to the crazy woman. And um, we just have a really great village and they're awesome grandparents, but, and I'm grateful, you know, I'm grateful for the, 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 the obstacles and the, the trials because they're the reason why I am where I am today. And I'm so passionate about helping others to create the life that they always wanted to create the life of their dreams. That's really important to me. Awesome. You know, you said something that really, really resonated with me that, you know, although you went through all of that, right, you made a determination that, you know, because of those things, you were going to make a difference in your own life, in your family's life, and then in the lives of others. That is so, so key. And, you know, I really appreciate you for that. Thank so. You. Yeah, I don't want to take up any more of our time. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic over to you completely and grab my pen and paper you know, as you talk to us tonight about bill credit to bill wealth. All right, so, so let's talk about it. And, and, you know, this is an interactive discussion. So me, the way I teach, I, I, this is not a dialogue. The monologue is a dialogue. So I want to be able to answer any questions that you may have. I want to be able to just have a conversation around the, the, uh, the topic. Because like I was saying in, in the beginning, my parents used to always say we couldn't do this or have this because of bad credit, because we have bad credit. And like I said, I used to say, oh, I don't know what bad credit is, but I know it's ruining our lives and I'm never going to have bad credit. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, life happened and those things that I planned to do, it didn't happen. And I was 26 when I got my real estate license, started making a lot of money at a very young age. Um, it's making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, and the more money I made, the more money I spent, um, and I ended up having more month than money. So the 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 how you know I bought a house at twenty three. My husband and I got married at at twenty two. Had our daughter, then we bought a house, and um, and so when we did, it was like okay, you know, I'm gonna be, we're gonna take care of everything. We're gonna be um, good stewards over our money. We're not gonna, we're gonna be frugal. We're not gonna be frivolous. Then I started making all this money for a 26, 27, 30 year old young lady. And I started all of a sudden needing all these things that I now knew I didn't need, right? I needed a bigger house. I needed the Mercedes. I needed all of these things, right? And um, so I got into this ever evolving cycle of um, having more month than money. Um, and I ended up filing bankruptcy. I hit rock credit bottom. Um, and I had to let everything go. I had, I had had properties, some of them foreclosed, some of them short sold, some of them, you know, I, I had to just let go. Um, my, my bank account, you know, I had more going out than I had coming in, making $200,000, $250,000 a year. My, I had, uh, my bills were between fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month. Um, so it was just, I got in over my head and I had to learn the hard way. So Constance, I, I plan for you to just go ahead and teach, but I wanted to interrupt right here because, you know, I was a person who found myself the same way, right? Making multiple six figures between my husband and myself, still living paycheck to paycheck, you know? And, you know, so even when God called me to do what I'm doing today to help, you know, just change, you know, people's financial lives. I, I questioned a lot because I made so many mistakes, but I realized 
that it's because I made those mistakes and because I learned from the, those mistakes, that's what equips me. And that's, you know, that really resonated with me with what you said. So I just wanted to piggyback off that, you know, to let people know that it doesn't matter, you know, where you are, where you've been, you know, it's a matter of making the mental mindset to make a difference and to change. So go right ahead. You're absolutely, no, you're absolutely right. Every time, like, I, I'm the type of person that be like, look, God, you ain't got to have me go through nothing in order for me to learn. I can learn from her. I can learn from him. But God be like, no, we're going to go ahead and put you through. And it's, and it's not that God has put me through that. It's that, you know, sometimes I've made decisions and I made choices and, I, and I've had to go through those things so that I can be, um, I can be a better teacher. I'm going through something right now with identity theft, right? Somebody's been, oh God, they stole my mail and they they went through my bank account. They've taken money out of my account. This is last, this is within the last month. They've gone to Costco and um, spent over $12,000 12, to, $12, to date in Costco. Costco sent me stuff in the mail. They know it wasn't us. Somebody stole my husband's ID, um, went to Costco. They put their picture on his ID. He went to Costco, started spending a bunch of money, went to Home Depot, spent a bunch of, just spending all kinds of money, right? And, and, and then there's, there's all this stuff. They're still doing it. They're, they're applying for credit. Then they come and steal just my whole entire mailbox last week. And it's like... Oh God, but what I'm, but, but it just, it just speaks to what you said. Like for me, I'm like, this is very um, inconvenient. It's a nightmare, but what's the learning in it for me, right? How am I going to help others as a result of it? And that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at just the, the inconvenience and the nightmare, but how can I help others? Okay. This is a, probably going to be another chapter in my book. This is going to be something that's going to help me to help others to be able to avoid the pitfalls. And that's how you have to look at life. So anyway, back to um, what we were talking about. So in terms of credit, um, I had to learn the hard way. And again, it's the reason why um, that I'm so passionate about it. It's the reason why I've, you know, I've helped thousands of people. I have a, a book called Keeping Score, What You Need to Know to Make Your Credit Score Grow. Um, it's a bestseller. I sat down and wrote it as an, in, in a need. I, I never had a desire to be an author, never. But there was a need. Um, people would always ask me questions. So I said, hey, here's a resource. I don't do credit repair, but let me help you um, with the information and the knowledge. Because one of the things I know for sure is that um, wealthy people, they use leverage. They don't use their own money. They use OPM as leverage to uh, create wealth. But to get to the point, um, in terms of creating wealth, um, did you know that 400 of the richest people in the country have as much wealth as all African Americans and a third of the Latinos combined. That's 80 something million people. 400 people in this country have more wealth than over 80 million people combined. 43% of African Americans and 46% of Hispanics are homeowners while 72% of white are homeowners. So there's this huge disparity with wealth creation in this country, right? And there's been a decline of wealth within this country and the wealth gap, as we know it, as we see uh, as in, in, in the white communities, the wealth is going up, it's over six figures, it's $116,000 on average. And in the African-American household, it's only $1,700 and on the decline. Our average net worth is on the decline. Mm. We're in a very bad state. And so I, for me, it's my mission to educate our people, to really bring the information because it's not hard, it's just not available. You know, there's a saying that if you wanna keep something from somebody, you just put it in a book. The information is out there. And sometimes, you know, people may not pick up a book, but hey, I feel like I'm the Harriet Tubman of, of financial freedom, right? I, I'm here to spread the good news and bring people out of, uh, out of bondage for wealth creation. Yeah. So in this country, 90% of wealth is passed intergenerationally. 90% of the wealth is passed intergenerationally. 80% of wealth is created through real estate, okay? And so historically, African-Americans were not able, there's, there's reasons, we weren't able to come to the table and purchase real estate like a lot of our white counterparts, right? Because you had things like redlining, right? You had redlining that prevented us from being in the game. 
So we couldn't, pa we couldn't obtain wealth to even pass it. And then when you start getting wealth, when we started getting wealth, now you have things like predatory lending, which disproportionately affected us more than anybody else. Now we mm -hmm. can have the same credit profile. I can have the same pre credit profile as a white person, but when we both go to the bank, and that's why Wells Fargo got in trouble last year, when we both went to the bank, they gave us, they gave us worse loans, they gave us higher interest rates, and they put us in these bad situations. And so what happened when the foreclosure crisis happened? We were on the front lines of all that stuff. So the mm -hmm. little bit of wealth that we've been able to accumulate over the last several years, we ended up losing it a few years ago. Right. So there's a crisis in our community that needs to be addressed. And it does start with credit. There's a point behind it. It does start with credit. And that's why I'm so passionate about that, because there's this huge disparity of inequity in our country, and it, it needs to be addressed, but we need people on the front lines that, are, that, can, that can give the information and the knowledge in a clear way, so that, and clear bite-sized way, so that we can, they can digest it, and then they can take action from it. Yeah. Right? So there's a, clear, there's a clear distinction between wealth because I, when I talk about being, you know, building your credit to build wealth, you know, it's not just about being rich. Being rich, you could have a lot of money, you know, and, but you could still, you could still work. You still may have to work and you can lose it. But when you're wealthy, it stays with you for a lifetime. When you're That's wealthy, right. your money is working when you don't work. So we have to learn how, how do we create wealth? How do we build wealth? How do we diversify our portfolio, right? When you're wealthy, you can most importantly leave a legacy. And so when we talk about using OPM, which is other people's money, that wealthy people, that's what they use when they're building their wealth, when they're sustaining their wealth. They're not using their own money when they're investing. Donald Trump is not using his own money when he's investing. He's scamming the banks, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's what we have to do. We have to, and, but credit is an integral piece of how we're able to build wealth because it's, a very, it's, it's, it's critical to having great credit. You can't use other people's money if your credit is bad, okay? Right. So we have to look at it in, uh, in a couple of different ways when we're talking about wealth creation and, and wealth building. Um, you know, there's, there's, um, there's the wealth gap that's happened because of, you know, of, of historical um, inequities, but there's also a way that we manage our, our money. And when we're, when we're not managing our money correctly, um, you know, there's, you know, a lot, a lot of times, and let's talk, let's talk, um, let's talk culturally. A lot of times we tend to wear our money. You know, we wear our liabilities and we have no assets. We're consumers and we're not necessarily investors. And we have to start changing um, the dynamic of the thinking of how we're doing things. One of the things that I do with my kids is if they own a PlayStation, they gonna own some Sony stock. If they wear in Jordans, they're going to have some Nikes, Nike stock, that is, right? So we have to start owning things that are appreciating and not just having depreciated assets, small things mm -hmm. like that. So in terms of the, you know, us wearing our money, we have to look at the, you know, the way we're, we're, we're operating and how we're managing our money every month, even with how we're paying our credit cards. You know, when we're only paying the minimum in our credit cards, when we're only, you know, we have a thousand dollar credit card. You have a thousand dollar credit card. Average interest rate on the credit card is twenty four point nine nine percent. Okay. Now, if you only pay twenty five dollars, which is the minimum payment on a on a thousand dollar credit card with twenty four point nine nine percent interest rate, it's going to take you eighty seven months to to pay off that credit card, and you will have paid over eleven hundred dollars in interest in that eighty seven months. But if you paid it off in six months, you only will pay $179 a month for six months, and you're only going to pay $74 in interest. So that's huge. All that money that you pay interest, you could be utilizing that money and in investing in something. But see, we don't realize small steps like that, small things like that, those are some small things that we could do to really change the dynamic and change the trajectory of our lives, change the wealth gap decrease the wealth gap that'll help our bottom line and our net worth you know just small things like that and so we have to look at how we're doing our our uh how we're wearing our money or how we're how we're not investing and being consumers because we need to be investors how we're mismanaging our money and then we have to look at how we're investing 
Because on average, people of color, we just don't invest. And that's another reason why there's a huge um, wealth gap is because we're not investing. We're not investing our money. So we're not, you know, so now, you know, you have 43% of, 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 of say, say 45%, you know, 43% for African-Americans, 47% for Hispanic, say 45% on average, people of color, we get, we, we, we're owning, we're owning homes now, right? So now we, we have an asset, an appreciable asset, but we have nothing else. We don't diversify that. And that's another reason why the white community, they're increasing their net worth and ours is decreasing is because we don't diversify our portfolio. We don't have anything. If we do have any investments, it may just be a house and that's it. So we have to look at, you know, other means. And there's, there are simple ways and I'll, and I'll tell you about it, but I'm just saying we have to look at investing in other means to stock. You know, you could do some micro investments, um, mutual funds, um, in, um, universal index life insurance. I know you probably know about that. So those types of things. And so now, now let me get to the credit, let me get to the, the credit piece. Because 44% of Americans don't monitor their credit. 56% of Americans have subprime credit and 78% of African Americans have subprime credit. 74% of Americans have errors on their credit. So if 44% of people don't monitor their credit, they don't know what's on there, a lot of them have subprime credit and it's due largely to the errors on their credit. So it's important that we start to monitor our credit because there's things on there that we don't even know. Credit Karma, um, you can go on Credit Sesame, you can go on MyFICO, you can go on Experian, you can go on all these sites and you can get your credit, you can get your credit report and see what's on there. The problem is a lot of people are scared because credit is the big bad wolf. It's something that we, we don't want to deal with. We may have made mistakes. I've had people that's like, you know what, Constance, I, I, I filed bankruptcy in 88 and I just do not want to see my credit. I'm like, sis, you know that, that bankruptcy ain't been on your credit for the last 20 years? 88. <laughs> and this is 2018, yeah. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> So, so a lot of times people just, they think it's just this big, scary, big, bad wolf type thing. And it's not. And we have to, we have to start looking at those things because that's the first step in creating your wealth is having good credit. So we have to start monitoring. Now I'm going to ask a question because we have some people watching. How many people in here are monitoring their credit? If you're monitoring your credit, post in the comments box, I monitor my credit. If you don't monitor your credit, post in the comments box. I don't monitor my credit. What I'm seeing more and more is people are monitoring their credit, but a lot of times, a large amount of us aren't. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Who's monitoring their credit? Is anybody in here not monitoring their credit? Anybody? All right. So, anybody monitoring? Okay. And Sarah said he's monitoring. Yeah, She's we have a few people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Continue. I want you to monitor your credit like you monitor your bank account. You get up every morning. You go through that bank account. I monitor my credit for the most part. Good, Charmaine. I want you to go in there and I want you to monitor that thing like you monitor your bank account every day, every week, every month. Keep track because your credit does this. It goes up and down, up and down, right? As you know, for the people who monitor, sometimes you'll get an alert that your credit score has gone up. Sometimes you'll get an alert that your credit score has gone down. And the reason why, and this is the critical part of it, the factors, the algorithms that affect your credit is so important. So if you look at the credit pie, and I'm, you know what, let me, can I, can I share my screen on here? So I want to yeah, show you. I I want to show you this credit pie. Let's see. Let me let me pull it up just so you can see it. Is this good for you guys? While, while um Constance is pulling that up, you know, if if this is really resonating resonating with you and you know opening your eyes to the possibilities and what you should be doing, I want you to say great stuff in the comments say great stuff in the comments while constance bring that up 
Um, let's see what's going on here. Can you see my screen? I, let's see, it looked like it kicked me off. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing your screen. If you're seeing her screen, can you just, yes, we can see your screen. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. I'm on screen instead of you. Okay, there we go. You're good. All right, all right. So here's what affects your credit. This is muy importante when we're talking about your credit, okay? So your 35% of your credit score is your payment history. That's how you pay your bills. Are you paying late? Are you paying on time? Are you going into collections? How are you paying? For the most part, once you've paid late, you may or may not be able to control that, right? The biggest piece is that revolving balance. 30% of that is revolving. Does anybody know what revolving is? Does anybody know what revolving credit is? What is a revolving? Somebody tell me what a revolving um, account is. Just one person. I'm going to wait. What's revolving? Can somebody guess what a revolving account is? They tell us yet? Not yet. Anybody know what a revolving? All right, I'm going to go ahead and say it since nobody wants to say it. Five, four, three, two, no? All right. So let me tell you what a revolving account is. You have different types of credit. You're revolving. Did anybody say it yet? Nobody said it yet? Credit cards. There you go, Charmaine. Yay! Charmaine, your revolving are your credit cards. Your credit cards is the second largest factor in your credit algorithm, in your credit score, right? So 35% of that is your payment history. 30% of it is your credit card balance. It's the quickest way your credit score can go up and it's the quickest way it can go down. That's the most control you have over your credit cards. It's 30%. So if you're maxed out on your credit cards, and credit cards are very important, right? You need credit cards. A lot of people, they don't like credit cards because, you know, you, I, I've had a lot of Christians tell me, we've, we, we cut up our credit cards at church. They told us don't owe Caesar nothing. But the problem with that is, in order to have good credit, you need a credit card. So just use them, don't abuse them. But it's the quickest way you can go up or go down. So if you pay your credit, your balance is down, your score is going to go up. That's why you see it moving every month when you're, doing, when, you're, when you're monitoring your credit. You maxed out, score is going to go down. That's how it is. So that's the thing you really can control. Now, if you're late on your credit cards, oh, you've just really just really messed some things up. I had a gentleman one time, he had, um, he came to me and, 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 and I pulled his credit, looked at his credit report, and his credit report is his profile, because I look at the score, but I also look at the profile. I'm looking at the profile, because I'm like, okay, th his profile looks really great. Like, he doesn't have bad, he doesn't have a bunch of collections, but what he had was he had some credit cards, small credit cards, but he was late on everything. Well, by him being late on everything, it destroyed his score. His score was in the high 300s. Credit profile was good because he had some lengthy credit. He had, you know, he, everything else was paid on time. Car was paid. But he was like, I said, why didn't you? And they were $25 credit cards. I said, why didn't you pay this, these things off? He was like, I don't know, Constance. I was just living my best life. I wasn't really tripping. I didn't think that it was important to pay them on time. He was paying them, but he was paying them late. They were maxed out. And so I have a simulator that says if he would have paid them on time, his scores would have been in the high 700s. But he had three credit cards that he, he paid late every month for months, $25, because he wasn't really tripping off of his, his, his credit cards. That's how mm -hmm. important your credit card payments, balances are to your credit. They are huge. The other things that are, are factors are, you know, um, length, lengthy credit. So if you've had, you know, the people with 800 credit scores, those are the guys who have, who've had cards that, you know, or accounts that, you know, five, 10 years. Um, and then types. So you want to have a mixed, you, mixed, mixed types of credit. You want to have, you know, if you have a, a, a car payment, you have a, a credit card, things like that. But a revolving or a credit card weighs even heavier than, say, a car payment. 
a $500 credit card weighs much heavier than a $25,000 car, okay? You can pay that $25,000 car off, it's not gonna shoot your score up. But if you pay that, that $500 car down, that's gonna shoot your score up. That's how important credit cards are to your credit score, okay? I just wanna make sure that you understand. Not only having them, making sure that they're low balances, making sure that um, you're paying them on time, because it's very, very, very important. Very important. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just unshare. All right. So in terms of um, ways to improve your credit score very quickly, pay down your credit cards. Sometimes paying them to zero actually can reduce your credit score, believe it or not. Sometimes it'll increase your credit score. Oh, there's a pause. Can you guys hear me can you hear or me? Constance? Can you hear me? Can you okay, hear me? Now we can. Yes, you're good. Okay. okay, okay, okay. I get excited about this stuff, so I'm sorry. Um, so what I was saying was, um, so ways to increase your score quickly. You can pay down your credit cards, pay down your revolving balance, pay them down to like 30%, no more than 50%. So pay them down, keep them low. That'll increase your score relatively quickly, okay? If you have an old credit card, what you don't want, it just happened to me. I had an old um, Synchrony Bank for some furniture that I got like five years ago. And I bought the stuff because it was like free interest for six months or something like that. And I never used it again. And I forgot about it. They closed it here recently and it dropped my score. So if you have a credit card, um, a revolving card, you know, utilize it, utilize it lightly. Um, you know, if, you know, get gas, pay it down, pay it off, but just don't let it, don't not use it for years and years on end because what will happen is if you don't use it, it can drop your score. Okay. Um, you can transfer your balances. So say you don't have the money to maybe pay them down, right? To get, to increase the score, you can transfer balances through, through your different credit cards, or you can ask for a limit increase, right? If you ask them to increase your limit, that brings down your utilization and will increase your credit score, okay? Um, if you could also dispute. Now, let me just tell you something. Disputing, if you go to a credit repair company, right, and I know many of you probably have, you know, you guys may be a part of credit repair um, service or things like that, just telling you, the only thing that they're doing is sending out dispute letters on your behalf. You're paying $97 a month for them to dispute on your behalf, okay? Mm -hmm. And 79% of the people who use credit repair services, they end up getting back in credit trouble again. 79% of people who use credit repair services end up getting back in credit trouble. But if you learn how to do it yourself, 96% of people who learn it, how to do it themselves, they end up having and creating these habits for a lifetime. So I really encourage you to, if you can learn how to do, how to increase your score yourself, I would really encourage you. I have a couple of books out. I have a, a Keeping Score, which is a bestseller. I have a workbook out that will give you homework assignments specifically around your credit. And I have online training courses that will really, it's the book on steroids. I, go, I take you all the way through. But the, and, and actually some credit repair um, companies have actually, or companies, some credit repair people have actually taken my training so that they could charge people to clean their credit. Um, but it's important because you really want to know, and it's part of your, your, financial, your financial health. Because if you, if you know how to monitor your credit, then it begins to trickle down in other areas in, in your life. You know, you're, you'll start being able to manage your money better. And then ultimately that having good credit is going to help you with, um, with being able to invest. And that's the ultimate goal for me. The ultimate for me is to show you how to create your wealth, but you have to start with a small thing as credit. Okay? And so I want to talk to you about being a, an investor. Um, Vincere said, how about if you apply for a credit card and do not use it? And Vincere, it's the same thing. So your, your, um, your credit is really based upon utilization. That's why utilization is so important. You want to utilize your credit. 
Okay. So, so you not utilizing it, it's not going to help your credit. It's your utilization stimulates your credit score. Okay. So that's part of, you know, that's part of building your credit, not just having the credit card, but utilizing it. And like I said, use it, don't abuse it. Right. So gas, you know, if you want to go to the grocery store, you can pay it off, pay it down. For some, again, sometimes paying it off to zero can actually drop your score, right? Um, I pay mine to zero for the most part. I try to because, and I only, and I do that because I'm not trying to apply for any, you know, if I'm not trying to apply for any loans. But sometimes in order to stimulate your credit, you need to utilize those cards, utilize them lightly, but utilize them because it'll stimulate your credit score. Okay. Great information, great stuff. Um, you know, I wanted to point out what, um, that how, how important credit is, right? Because when I was going through my process of repairing um, my own credit, I did exactly what you said. I cut it all up. I got rid of it all. I'm like, I'm done. And so I found myself, of course, you can use your, your debit card, buy a ticket. And I went out and traveled. But the way back, you know, my husband and I were like crossing paths in terms of traveling. So I was going to rent a car, bring it home and have him take it back. All I had was my debit card. Right. And it was so hard. As a matter of fact, I couldn't get a car rented. Yeah. There was one rental company that took debit cards and they didn't have any cars available. So I had to sit at the airport for two hours for my husband to at me go back and, and to drive right back to the airport the next morning and so it is it's, it's important right. even us for that you know right. purpose right right so utilize them um just you know you just have to you have to exercise self-control and that's the bottom line you have to exercise self-control and like i was saying ultimately what you want to do is you want to be able to take that you know you want to start leveraging that so that you can create wealth even the money that we talked about earlier, the things that the thing, the frivolous things that you do, we can take that extra money and then we can start investing in other things. You know, start investing in stock. So there's there's some small things you can do. You can invest twenty to fifty dollars a month or twenty to fifty dollars in stock. You can purchase shares. You could purchase penny stock. Um, before I started investing, before I invested in the marijuana dispensary. Um, which for me was a six figure investment. I was, because I wanted to get into the marijuana game, I was investing in marijuana like penny stock. And so those, you know, there's just small things that you can start investing in now. Now stop it, it. What you need to understand about that is it's a risk. You can have gains, you can have losses, but you won't be able to, you won't know until you take the risk. I know uh, Lyft is getting ready to, to go public. So, so what I've done, oh, so, what, one of the things that I've done is a few years ago, I have four kids and let me see. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you this little slide of my, of my children. Let me show you real quick. Let me share my screen real quick. Thank you so much for joining us um i see you guys enjoying it um keisha thanks for joining lynn kim alandis monique vincia katrina charmaine charlene Kiras. i hope you, i'm pronouncing that correctly donna thank you guys so much um you, you could just put in the comments you know what it is that you are um getting out of what um Constance is sharing with us tonight. Go right ahead, Constance. So these are my kids. They cute, huh? This yeah. is them a couple of years ago. This is my babies a couple of years ago. About three years ago, actually. And this is around the time where I started investing. So what I did is I had them take a Dr. Boyce walk-in stock class. And I said, listen, all you guys, if you guys take the stock class, I will give you $1,000 a piece to start investing, right? So as you see, my daughter, she's, you know, she's a teenager. She was like turn up time. She didn't have time to do it. If it didn't involve social media, Snapchat, she didn't do it. And my other two, the, the two younger ones, like the one in the red, he wanted to do it, but he, he didn't. And then the, the, the youngest one, he wanted to do it, but he has the, the attention span of a gnat, so he didn't do it. 
So the, the one right here with the little Warriors uh, jersey on, he ended up doing it. I gave him $1,000. He took the, in fact, it just popped up today. It was a memory today, I believe. Um, he, he took the class. And so he learned about the different terms. He learned about how to open up an Ameritrade account. And then he started investing in stock. My 12-year-old son at the time took $1,000 and made $8,000 within a year investing in stock. So the information is out there. Google is your best friend. You can Google everything. And that's simply what he did. And start, he, so he was, he was investing in all, you know, like I said, in, in, in Nike, in um, Sony and all those things. But he was also researching, investing in pharmaceutical companies, investing in telecommunications companies, things like that. And so he took that investment and he made $8,000. And so um, last year, I, I opened up a, uh, uh, it, the, the class, Charlene is, um, doc, is, is Dr. Boyce Watkins for kids, stock class for kids or something like that. And it's uh, through blackbusinessschool.com, I believe. Um, but so, so, you know, my oldest daughter, she learned now she's in college and now, you know, she, 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 she kind of learned. So I, I opened up a, um, uh, what's the name of that, that we do where we Robin hood, I opened up a Robin hood account, put a thousand dollars in a Robin hood account. Right. And I said, Hey, here's a password for all you guys. If you guys want to trade some stock, if you want to invest in some stock, I put a thousand dollars in there. And uh, that girl be trading stock like, like it, it ain't nobody's business now because she saw what her little brother did. And she's like, wait a minute, he did this. I can do it too. So she's, in, she's trading stock. And so now actually today um, I bought some, um, some, some lift stock. I saw she had, she, had, she had some extra money in there. She's from June of last year, that $1,000 that um, I put in there is now up to about $2,700. So um, I don't know what my son did last time. He was he was doing his thing, uh, but she's doing it on Robinhood now. And Robinhood is a, is a very easy platform. It is an app. If you want to start investing in stock, go with Robinhood. It's a very easy platform where you can start buying and selling right away. You can start. You don't have to have a bunch of money. You could fund your account, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, fifty dollars, or whatever. Start funding those accounts. Invest in your children, you know, st instead of buying them um, games for their birthdays, buy them shares of stock or buy them both. You don't have to take one out for the other. You know, I'm not telling you not to indulge and I'm not, not telling you not to um, reward your children, but teach them those types of principles because those types of principles are going to far exceed anything else. It's going to take them much further than, than playing a game could. You know, if we take them, to, we, we show them how to be uh, investors as well as consumers, because we're all consumers, right? But if we can offset that a little bit, it's gonna make such a huge difference in our community. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, so I see a question from Keisha that you can answer. Do you have a recommendation on which credit card to start with first when you're rebuilding credit? And me personally, I wanted you to repeat, um, you know, what your son did um, in terms of the, I think you said Dr. Joyce Watkins, is that, was that the name? Boyce with a B. Dr. Boyce Watkins. Boyce Watkins. I'm definitely going to check that out because I, you know, I need to get my, my, my kids in, involved in stuff like that now. Um, so yeah, Keisha wanted to know if you have a recommendation, which credit card to start with first when so you're in credit. If you're rebuilding, there's a couple. So number one, Credit Karma will give you different suggestions on based upon your credit profile, which companies are likely to approve you. So you can try that. Um, if you've had credit challenges, I know like First Premier will give you a card. Um, I know that um, uh, Capital One a lot of times will give you a card. Um, when I, I told you I filed bankruptcy, that was 10 years ago. And um, I got this card that I absolutely hate. It's called Applied Bank. And it was a secured card. Put $200 on it, hated it. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. I would go to the store, get, get a bottle of water and a five-hour energy drink and some gum, and sometimes it did not work. And so it just, ah, it just drove me crazy. But I still have that card. Why? Because I've had it for 10 years, and it's keep, keeping my score good. I don't use it at all, and they charge me $10 a month for it. So um, that... Um, that, you know, applied bank, 
you could be though it's a secured credit card a lot of secured credit cards but also credit credit karma will do the same awesome just posting is that is is that um if you have any other questions regarding that you can go ahead and do that but i just posted any of the questions that you have before we wrap up tonight um, Constant, this has been really, really great information that you shared with us tonight. I know that lots of folks got, you know, um, a great eye opener. Um, and so that's what I wanted. You know, it's important. You are not going to build wealth without credit, right? Um, you're definitely not going to. I know, oh, it's going to be a lot harder. Yeah, for you too. And so it's important that you make sure that your credit is intact and that you use, not abuse. Yes. You know, wealth is a holistic experience. And so when we talk about credit, you know, I never wanted to be the, I do credit repair person because it seems like everyone does credit repair and, 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 it, and, it, and it could be really cheap and cheesy because credit repair is for so long, um, it's really hurt people. People have been swindled credit repair because I actually we were swindled years ago we paid this guy fifteen hundred dollars to fix our credit and he did absolutely nothing fix my husband's credit he did absolutely nothing so I never wanted to be associated with anything anyone like that um, but what I really want is to really show you and educate you on how to be able to utilize that credit so that you can use it as leverage because they go hand in hand and the reason why I talked about the historical stuff because it's so important that's the only way we're going to be able to create wealth in our community is if we understand historically what's happened, how it works, how we can overcome that. Um, with with everything being so, the, with the internet being, um, you know, giving exposure so much, we don't have those um, those same barriers that say our parents or grandparents had. Right? Credit used to be you go into a store and it was a handshake. Well, somebody that looks like me, you were an Ellie we wouldn't get that same opportunity. Right. So now it's really, you know, a, 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 a hopefully a, a non-discriminatory process where it's just based upon your merits. It's based upon how you've paid your bills and all of those things. So you can get, you can do so much, be so much, have so much um, if you just understood the basics of how these things work and you can really create wealth and, and then, you know, we can get into other things like how to, you know, start building multi, getting into multi units and how to really create your wealth portfolio with so many things. And I do talk about, you know, those things, Renelli, and, and I do some coaching. So, you know, if anyone is interested in that, I, 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 I offer that. Um, yeah, definitely tell people how they can stay in touch with you that, you know, so that they can reach out and, and just, you know, know exactly what you have to offer. Thank you. Well, it's important to me because, you know, educating our community is key. And the only way that we're going to change the situation that we're in is if um, we have the information and the knowledge. And again, I just try to give it in very simple and con a concise manner so that you can understand it and give you actionable steps so that you can take action and change your life, period, point blank. And it's not as difficult as we think. Um, you know, so I do, I, I do coaching. I have a group for women. It's called Growth, Abundance, and Overflow. And it's about really growing you in every aspect of, of your life. Um, so that's for women. That is um, um, something, you know, with that, you know, really help them gain clarity on um, creating, um, shifting the mindset around money and how to build it and how to really help with their businesses. So if they, they're interested in that, um, they can go to mywealthroadmap.com. I have that. I have um, an online credit program. I have a money management mindset program where I show you where all your money is, show you where it's going, show you how to invest it to create, to increase your net worth. I'm also doing a um, weekend of wealth retreat in Napa, California, beautiful, beautiful Napa, California, um, Napa Valley, California. That's going to be the first one in August 23rd through 26th. It is a weekend of luxury um, and it's, but it's, but it's, it's going to be luxury. You know, we're going to have a masseuse there. We're going to have a private chef there. It's going to be in the, we're going to, um, take a chauffeur limo to the wine country and do wine tasting and all that. It's going to be all, all that, but you're going to, you're, we're going to actually be working on getting your financial situation straight. And so you're going to walk away with your 12 month wealth map so that you in 12 months, your, um, your net worth. Can literally increase by 100%. So we're going to be doing that in August. So I invite you 
Um, this, this is for 10 women. I just rolled that out last week and I have five um, spots left for that. So if they're interested, they can go to weekendtowealth.com. And so that's the first one. The second one is going to be in Costa Rica. We don't have a date for that yet, but um, it's all about how can we really help people define and create the life of their dreams. And uh, that's my mission and my goal in life. So reach out weekend to me. To that's my birthday weekend. My birthday is August 25th. Well, then I think you should come out and, and create some wealth with us, girlfriend. <laughs> well, we'll I'm definitely sure. talk about that. Yes. Uh, definitely. Listen, <laughs> have really, really um, outdone my expectations tonight. I appreciate you coming on and sharing with all of us. Um, Vincia said, I truly appreciate the information you shared tonight. Um, Keisha said, thank you. Um, very interesting information. You know, um, someone asked what, oh, that was Charlene asked you, what is the name of the class? So you answered that already. Um, yeah, so you definitely hit the spot tonight. We thank you. And I, my, my hope is that those of you who are on and those of you who are going to be watching the replay, that you will not just take this information as, you know, let it go through one ear and out the other, but that you really buckle down, um, build your credit so that you can begin the road of building wealth. Right. Um, any any parting words you have for us tonight, Constance? You know, it, at, there's uh, statistics that say that you know the wealth gap is going to widen, and by the year 2053, um, we're actually going to be bankrupt as a people. African Americans will be bankrupt. Right now, our net worth is $1,700 on average, and it's and it's dwindling. And so, if we don't take action right now by choices and decisions that we're making in our lives and in our communities, the state of our community is going to be hell if what they're predicting happens. happens. So I really challenge you to take massive action to change your life. But not only that, the information that you get, share it. Teach your children, tell your mama, your auntie, your cousins, tell everybody. Not, don't tell them about me, but just tell them about the information. Well, you can tell them about me too, but just tell them about the information that could really help and impact their lives because we really need this information. It's important that we grow together. And you know, there's an African proverb that says, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, grow together. And so it's important that we're, we bring people along the journey with us because th that's the reason why I do it. I'm okay. I'm good by myself, but I, I can be better. And I don't want to be alone, but be there by myself. I want to bring people along with me. I want us all to win together. And I want you to want the same thing. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Let us go together. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, next week I'll be on, as a matter of fact, next week I'll be back here for we're going to be doing a full day next week. We're going to do Activate Prosperity Blitz starting at 12 p.m. Um, in the group, 12 all the way through 8. Every two hours, we'll have a new session. So make sure that you stay tuned for information coming up on that. Um, I'll be sharing that starting tonight and all week. You'll hear about it. So make sure you mark your calendar for that. And then our next guest is going to be on August for August, <laughs> on April 14th, and um, we'll be having Lucinda Cross on, and she'll be talking to us about the big ask. So make sure that you mark your calendar for that as well, and every two weeks following that, we will be having a guest speaker, and I will be on every other week as well, sharing you information about building a strong financial legacy and being the last generation. We are the last generation that has to start over. Yes, because we're going to be building a strong foundation and passing that on to our children. So have a night, everyone. Make sure that you stay tuned in the group and um, ask away any questions you have. Whatever um, frustrations you have, we are here to support you in your growth. So make sure that you share that with us. 
Have a good night, everyone. Thanks again, Constance. I appreciate you. <laughs> good night. Appreciate it. Good night.